Okay, and I'm going to show my screen. Should have shown my screen first. Right. So the first thing I wanted to bring up, what I thought was a really great way for getting started was this Libraries Build Business Playbook. This is a free download. I'll share these sl slides after because I have a lot of links in them. Um, and so this is a free download that walks you through setting up business services, um, gives a lot of food for thought of um, how what business owners want, um, different examples from libraries that participated in the Libraries Build Business Grant Program through ALA and Google. Um, so the, the next slide is, is a screenshot from that playbook. And I also want to point you to the Slack channel. So there is a community from around the country of librarians and library staff who are working with business owners and entrepreneurs. And um, the Slack channel is a place where you can go and ask questions and see about upcoming events. They do their own community um, meetings monthly. So great resource all around. So the link is to that. So I thought that starting um, to think about um, what the business organizations were was to start with what it is that business owners want. So this is um, from the um, uh, Libraries Build Business Playbook. And so this talks about things that, um, you know, when you're starting a business or you're growing your business, these are certain categories. And Joe and Alejandro, if you want to jump in at any point um, to add on or, you know, whatever, please feel free. Um, so things like business plans, market research, which reference solutions is such a great tool, demographic research, um, using the census information. We had a webinar last month about using um, census information for business owners. Um, legal matters, um, things like, uh, you know, are you registered correctly with the state and paying your taxes appropriately? Are you, um, if you have employees, are you are they contractors or are you giving them all of the 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 benefits that they're supposed to have as as indicated by the state? Joe, did you have something? Uh, I was adjusting myself in my seat, but I can say that <laughs> <laughs> we actually have a small business workshop training workshops on every one of these topics that are on the list here. Uh, so I'll just remind everyone, go to ucedc.com, uh, ucedc.com, and you drop down the training tab and you'll see um, upcoming workshops. Uh, we, we do these workshops on behalf of our, um, our funding partners, uh, you know, various counties and municipalities that uh, engage us, partner with us to help, you know, put a focus on uh, economic development small business lending and, and training and counseling in their business districts. So um, they're not necessarily on demand, but there's, um, you know, dates that are coming up for some of these. And then in other cases, you can go to the prior recorded webinars, which we can, you know, keep uh, on file too. And you can go back and you can click on any of those and, and listen to a past webinar on any of these topics. So they're, they're all available there. Great. Thank you. Yep, you bet. Yep. Yes, yeah, so it's reassuring to know you don't have to be an expert on all of these things. You can rely on other business organizations, or you can also think about in your own library what kinds of things you have in your collection or you know through your services that are addressing some of these things. Um, or you know what can you pull together that might um, address some of these questions. Um, so uh, industry information, regulations. So depending on the kind of business, there might be. Like a food-based business might have certain licensing requirements that are different from a different type of business. Um, financing um, and promotion, marketing, um, how to have an on a website or you know use some of the e-commerce tools that are available. Um, so these are all different kinds of things that a business owner might need and that the library could provide or have um, resources um, to point them to. So then I, you know, I had this in mind, and then I saw that there was an event in Baltimore County Libraries um, with the our Urban Libraries Council where they were talking about business topics and they were talking about um, one of their breakout sessions was about mapping your entrepreneurship ecosystem. And there's a lot of different tools out there, a lot of different ways that libraries talk about 
figuring out like what asset mapping and community scans and all of these things. And I thought that this one was so nice and simple for this topic of like, what are the business organizations and who can you partner with and how does the library fit into this? So either offer something different or uh, I serve a gap or bring some pieces together in that community. So this was just like somebody took a picture of what they had mapped out and I tried to look closely and because I couldn't find a template or anything. Um, and I built my own. So there's basically community support and capital. And when you think about what business organizations provide, it's any number of these things either separately or combined. So things like community and networking, um, connecting business owners to each other because businesses can be customers for one another. So a lot of times they wanna connect and sell their services, but they might also realize that together in a community or in you know, a certain area that if businesses band together, they might have some additional leverage or um, you know, be able to, to coordinate things that would be beneficial to all of them. So there are business organizations that offer that kind of community building. Then there's the business organizations that offer support and education. Um, they offer training classes and webinars. They, um, they might uh, actually be the organizations that are asking businesses to meet certain requirements, but then also helping those businesses to meet those. And then capital, the financing, loans, education about um, financial topics, um, which is so crucial for business owners to start up or to expand. So then keeping on Joe and Alejandro, what would you say um, is the place of UCEDC in this chart? Um, I will say we're in the middle of that. We, <laughs> we, we, we have um, access to capital. We have this for with the technical assistant group and all the, the training. We, we do one-on-one -on -one counseling. If uh, some of your clients don't know where to start their business, we do that. So we can say, them, hey, maybe I can help you. Or we know other organizations as, as like us and nonprofits that can actually provide you um, with that help. And in community, we always try to, to be out there. We, we do a lot of uh, community events with NJEDA, with New Jersey Business Action Center, and all organizations. So uh, like before the pandemic, we used to do something called um, that was meet the lender. Mm -hmm. um, and basically we did all of that, those with banks and we were there with the community trying to support them. So we try to be in the middle of all of those uh, circles that you have there. Okay, we, we can fit anywhere on your Venn diagram. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And I'd say that there is no bad place to be on this Venn diagram at all. Um, if we go back to the, the picture from the event, they, they put the Lexington Public Library sort of in that intersection of community and support, um, but maybe uh, your library might be anywhere there, or maybe it's not even on this chart yet, and that's completely okay because um, what we're talking about is partnerships and um, you, know, you don't have to do it all, it's knowing about the other organizations too. Becky, um, do you have a sense of where your library might fit in? It's funny that you asked that. Um, I, and I'm sorry, I turned off my, stop sharing my video, but I didn't mean to like get rid of it completely. Um, anyway, I, uh, I just wrote down a note, like I feel sometimes that we're pulled in so many directions in our library to cover so many things. And I don't know, if, some of it sounds like we have to hold the new business owner's hands and guiding them. Mm. Is that, is that what you're expecting? Me personally, absolutely not. <laughs> because there are other organizations that you can refer them to. Mm -hmm. So it's when they come in with a question knowing who else is available. But so maybe guess, the library has like one element of something. Like just remember we have reference solutions, but yeah, no, I've done and I've done a ref I did a program where we had like the reference solutions person come and um he he zoomed in for us. Um, but you know, only three people showed up to that. So I think when it's a new business owner, like their timeline is specific to their life rather than, oh, we have this program that's going to work now. Mm. And I, 
and I worry about like what we can do for them. And I also, you know, I want to make sure that we have the right staff here giving them the right information. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely based on the capacity of the library and what the special focus might be, which is going to be different. Mm -hmm. um, and as we go in and looking at the different business organizations, I think that when you develop partnerships, you're able to make a smooth like handoff so that the person isn't feeling like they wasted time going to the library, that they're really getting connected with. Somebody. Exactly. I want, I, I don't want them feeling like they're, hand, I also don't want them feeling like they're handed off to one, another organization that hands them off to another organization that hands them off to another organization. I want them to feel like they, even if we can't do everything for them, um, that if they're coming to us for information, that we're giving them information that doesn't send them in a circle. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Joe and Alejandro, how do you kind of manage that, um, you know, maybe putting people in the correct place when they're referred to you or they, they contact UCEDC, but it might not be the right fit for them? I would say that, um, you know, in, in the circle there for capital, um, you know, we would evaluate <clears throat> where you know where they are and what type of business they are so for example if they're a, a pure startup um they're going to be better off talking with us because most banks won't entertain startup businesses for uh, for lending and um you know if if they're a minority owned business we've got special programs for um, Latinx and black owned businesses, women owned businesses, um, LGBTQ, we've got programs and, and, and lending um, support there. So kind of depending on the situation, we could guide them. And then there's other cases where, um, you know, they're, they're seeking uh, larger funding and, and established business. And, you know, we, we could partner with a bank and get them what they need or just flat out send them over to a bank, you know, whatever the best situation is for them. So it almost um, sounds like we should be sending them directly to you rather than us trying to troubleshoot their issues. Uh, yeah, we could, you know, uh, the, um, there, there's a, there's a place for everybody <laughs> here <laughs> because wh whether you're a, a pure startup business or an established business, uh, for many years, um, you know, um, with a big expansion or, you know, building out a huge warehouse or something. So whether you need $10,000 or, you know, a couple of million dollars, we can help and in, in anywhere in between. So those those much larger loans and larger pro projects is where we team up with a bank. So and Joe, financing you... comes from both entities, the SBA dollars that we lend and the bank dollars. Go ahead, Becky. The UCEDC, um, does that cost people money? Like if we send a new owner over there to you, would they have to join your group and like pay some kind of plan? No, I just, and I'm only asking because I'm not familiar with it. So I want to make yeah. sure. Yeah, know, I, I should have, I should have stressed that in the, uh, in the, in the intro. Yeah. Our, our resources are, you know, almost all completely free. There's a, uh, you know, maybe a couple of instances where, we're doing a workshop on behalf of um, some other funding partner who is charging uh, mm -hmm. a small fee to to attend something. But uh, for the most part, everything that we do from the training workshops um, to the counseling and so forth is uh, is at no cost because we're, like I said, a, a nonprofit. We're funded by largely by the SBA, Small Business Administration, mm -hmm. and that's where um, a, a large um, um, a uh, funding from for us doing our what we call micro loans. Those are the loans that people can't get at banks, you know, 50,000 50, and under and start up businesses and so forth. Um, and all the uh, training programs that we do are are free as well. In fact, there's a couple of training programs where we actually provide what's called a forgivable loan. Um, and, you know, and, you know, people are selected uh, the um, under the right parameters in the program for for what their needs are, and there's some startup cop capital being provided. So I'm I'm dropping links um, into the chat for that, and that's something you know you can if you're sending out. Um, I'm not seeing any links, just so you know. I I only 
Pardon? I'm not seeing any links in the chat. Is no, I'm, I'm doing that as we speak. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. And, um, and then, Becky, I will also say that if you send some someone to us, we I'll contact them, or one of other uh, instructors will contact them, and we will do an assessment with them. One on one, we'll sit with them, say, "Hey, what do you need? Or, oh no, what is your desires? What do you actually need?" And we'll go from there. So we can say, "Hey, if you're here, uh, we can help you with this. If not, maybe there's another organization." But we will have. Uh, a soft introduction with the other organization. We don't say like, oh, here it is, go ahead and and, and, and find it on your own. Uh, I will try, for example, if, to do that uh, soft introduction with the SBDC as like, oh, this is the contact and, and Lillian, this is the person that uh, was looking for your services. This is the information and now go from there. But we'll always do that. So they they're don't find like they're in a ping pong match, like going there, 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 the ball. Uh, but yeah, so as Joe said, we, we try to help them as much as possible. Great. And um, Hing Choi and Amy, I don't want to, to miss you if you want to share where you think your uh, libraries fall in the uh, Venn diagram or if you have any thoughts on our conversation right now. Um, actually, I since I work in the department of labor in New Jersey, mm -hmm. anything related with labor, employment, and even economies that related to New Jersey, I had to give my staff members the report, the news, and uh, the statistics, the most important, that they can make decisions and make plans. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I attend this um, webinar is I want to see what the life is doing because once I gave my the, our commissioner and a piece of news about the library can help uh, what they are doing about uh, helping their um, um, customers and mm -hmm. doing uh, uh, take, uh, having jobs um, employment related like uh, job seeking uh, mm -hmm. in interview or something so the, our commission started to um, see what we can do to support the library uh, program like that that's why i want to um, attend this class and see what's going on and i can give the we pray to those people uh, staff member that in my department um, related that they can see what the library now is doing mm -hmm. and maybe they have better help for you because they have money. Right. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Okay, yeah. I'm joking, I mean. <laughs> and, and then they may give you some help because at least I know one of my co-workers who's a labor market analyst. Mm -hmm. Um, he visits libraries um, frequently um, to tell them what we are doing and what we can help or something like that. Perfect. Yeah. And um, yeah, that the whole um, workforce development piece is so tied to this because another need that business owners have is hiring people who have the skills that they need. Um, finding the educated workforce. A business can't expand if it can't find workers. So um, it all gets tied in together. And then I do have um, Department Labor um, on one of my slides coming up about as a partner, because making sure that you're compliant um, with the, you know, what Department of Labor is asking for um, and the regulations in the state is also important. So yeah. let, that's, yeah, let, oh, that, go that's ahead. why I think uh, your library is really helping because I've read of some of the articles in the news that are about how New Jersey libraries is helping uh, their clients to get jobs and for the business and everything. So I'm interested to see, to know more. Perfect, yeah. Well, thank you. All right, so um, with the Venn diagram, again, I think that if you, um, you know, have time and you want to think about this in the context of your local community, it might be helpful to do this activity and see 
you know, there are, I'm going to go talk about next some statewide and some federal partners to be aware of. But in your local community, you might have other organizations and nonprofits that are doing similar things. And so starting to think about who is in your ecosystem, who is supportive, where you can have really, um, you know, where there's the potential of connecting business owners. And then how is the library connecting to those organizations? And what are the needs of that organization that the library might be able to help with? So, um, you know, I keep talking about reference solutions, but if a nonprofit doesn't know that that's available at the library, because um, that might be an opportunity to provide training and the support that the business owners need, or maybe a nonprofit needs space or a place to do training. Maybe they need um, equipment that they have um, business owners who don't have computers or they don't have skills. So there might be other things where there is a handoff to those organizations for very specialized assistance, but then the library might also be filling in some other needs. So this is a nice way to frame that, I think. Um, okay, so the first one um, to be aware of, so this is where I'm gonna give you lots of different organizations. And this is not to say you need to reach out today to all of these. This is just to give a sense of ones that might sound familiar, ones that you may have encountered before, ones that you may not know of, that you might just want to explore, go on their website. Um, I'm not even connected to all of these. This is just, you know, what I'm aware of. And um, so we'll start with some federally funded organizations. So the Small Business Administration um, is a resource in and of themselves. They also um, fund other programs. They have um, different um, capital streams. They have different um, technical assistance partners that they work with and other or things that they fund. There's a Newark district office. They do have trainers um, and they talk about some of these SBA federally funded programs. The small business development centers are in colleges and universities. Um, I listed the ones that are in New Jersey. Um, they offer uh, business counseling. They do programs. Um, they are aware of and can counsel on um, the capital aspect. Um, they're doing a lot of training. They fall into mostly into that support portion, I believe, um, and are a great resource as well. And if anyone has anything to add or, you know, if you're familiar with any, just, you know, stop me. Um, SBA also funds SCORE. SCORE is a great organization if you're not currently working with them. Um, Becky, do you work with SCORE? We haven't, but they've actually been on my list to contact for a while. So this is like exactly a great reminder to uh, to actually get back on that. Yes. Yeah. Um, so SCORE is a network of volunteer uh, business mentors. They love to use libraries for their space. Um, they love to have use libraries as a way to promote what they're, the programs that they're offering. And they also um, uh, like to have libraries as a uh, provider of information to their, their mentors. So there may be opportunities at both levels to work with the people that are helping the business owners, but then to also work with the business owners themselves. Um, and there are a few chapters, their names are slightly confusing at times for <laughs> where they serve, um, but, uh, they tend to be very receptive to working with libraries. And Becky, if you need help connecting, I'm happy to, to see and make a connection if you need it. Or Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> Amy, I don't know if you want to unmute yourself at all, but you could, are also welcome if you want to pop in at any point. Um, yeah, we, we had done a, a lot of score workshops prior to the pandemic and they were always very well received um and we're starting to you know now talk to them about doing some at the beginning of uh next year so we're we're looking forward to hosting those again um you know people always seem to get a lot of good information from them so um we're looking forward to that great in fact i could give you a little more info um mm -hmm. regarding um uh, when to send people to SCORE, when to send people to Small Business Development Center, because 
uh, to the you know untrained eye, they kind of seem like they both do exactly the same thing, and they kind of do. There's a lot of overlap, but in terms of who they're serving, it's slightly different. So, under the SBA Small Business Administration umbrella, uh, falls uh, the uh, training and counseling arm is new, the Small Business Development Centers and SCORE. So for SCORE. Um, it's supposed to be geared toward <clears throat> businesses that are not yet in business, somebody who's contemplating a business or maybe at a very early stage, you know, more startup and, you know, get the guidance from um, volunteers at SCORE who will help um, you kind of define the business and understand the market and, you know, get those early steps in, whereas the Small Business Development Center it's supposed to be more for existing businesses that are at that level where they need to find financing. And um, the Small Business Development Counselors um, who are paid counselors will help those individuals um, find the right sources of financing. And of course, you know, counsel them throughout that. So we overlap um, and, you know, partner with both of those organizations sometimes do workshops training workshops on their behalf and we're sending you know people back and forth for counseling and you know to us back to them to uh and there's kind of a developmental stage uh, that once they do need financing they may come to us if we're the right fit for that and you know we kind of go back and forth with both of those organizations okay thank you thank you yeah. for explaining that distinction yep and then the Women's Center for Entrepreneurship, um, they um, have a special focus on women. Um, they have, um, when I was looking at their website um, to find where they're physically located, they're in Chatham, but in their website, they list a number of libraries that they work with. So they're very um, you know, receptive to working with libraries um, and with that special focus on female or women-owned businesses. All right. So on, the, um, on this one, sorry, Andrea, on this yeah. part on the Women's Center, there are two in New Jersey. One is uh, th this one, the one you, you just spoke, they, they're doing everything online right now. They're, they don't have any uh, physical presence. And the other one is located in Canada. Oh. That's uh, Laida. Laida. Right, yes. Laida right. Women's Center. They, pr they do provide those. And we also work with them. We have a good relation with them. So... Uh, we can do those soft introductions uh, of the people that need the, those services. Great. I will make that correction to the slide and add that in before I load the slides. Oh, one more thing I wanted to say about federally funded organizations just to be aware of. So in New Jersey, we have legalized cannabis. Uh, you probably weren't expecting me to talk about this. We have legalized cannabis um, in New Jersey. However, federally, cannabis is not legalized. So if a person, if a, if a patron is coming to your library because they wanna open a cannabis-based business, they won't be able to necessarily make use of federally funded organizations. So for instance, SCORE could help them with, count, or with mentorship on things outside of cannabis, but they're not gonna be authorities on regulations about cannabis or those special things in New Jersey. And also cannabis-based businesses are not eligible for federally funded loans. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and on that part, uh, NJ Bank New Jersey Business Action Center, they just opened a cannabis center and they have a program uh, to learn how to open a store that's gonna start in 2023. Awesome. I will make sure to send that information out. So that leads me to New Jersey. So we've mentioned a couple of times the New Jersey Business Action Center, and they are such a wonderful resource um, for New Jersey-based information. Um, they like to talk about how they're, um, they, they can't reduce barriers for business owners, but they can make the connections that a business owner might need. If there's an issue with permits, if there's a question about something, they're very well connected to all aspects of state government for a good handoff. Um, and they have a 1-800 number, they have a website that's a wealth of information, and they also have a chat-based service in there, and they can make referrals to other state agencies as needed. So for the patron who's having an issue, say, with their taxes, they're a business owner who's not sure about which uh, structure for their business to have or how they pay their sales and use tax, 
um, you know, you could refer them to the Business Action Center and they'll be able to put them in touch with the appropriate person. Um, so that is even to, you know, market that somewhere on the website uh, in a business collection or business resources list to talk about the Business Action Center would be very beneficial. And then if you as a page, as a librarian get a question that is difficult to answer, you can also make use of the Business Action Center resources on their website to maybe find a link that you can send. Um, NJEDA, um, and I think Business Action Center is really the ones to know because then they can connect you. Um, but just to be aware that the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, they um, have a state funded um, capital that they provide through other lenders. They have their own grant and um, loan opportunities and they foster business um, and entrepreneurship in the state. So you may see NJEDA mentioned um, you know, on other websites of other organizations and they're kind of working at that state level. You might not really have NJEDA coming in, you might not be making referrals directly to them, but that, that information will be there under the surface or you know, in support of a lot of these other organizations. And then outside of that, there are other aspects of state government that support business owners. Um, and some of these are just to kind of be aware of. Um, and some of them might be training providers if you're looking, if you have a need in your community. So one of my favorites is Taxation University that's part of Division of Taxation. They are such lovely people. And um, they will come to your library and do training. They did a lot of that pre-COVID. They've been doing some webinars and I'm meeting with them and in 2023 we'll be offering some opportunities to work with them for, for training. Um, but they're also wonderful um, if a business owner has questions directly about tax taxation, um, they have great resources as well. And I, I believe that they have, uh, well, when they do training, they share a contact information so that business owners can get in touch with them directly at Taxation University, which is another great benefit of having them come in. Um, your library might be in an urban enterprise zone. Um, so you can look at the Department of Com Com Community Affairs to find that list that gives certain benefits to business owners. Um, Department of Labor and Workforce Development. Um, there's a large push right now, um, a new division that is working on wage and hour and contract compliance. So you might be seeing some things coming out from me that they wanna get in front of business owners to make sure they're meeting the requirements. Um, the Board of Public Utilities likes to share their clean energy program, their incentives for business owners around that. And then um, I wanted to put in the uh, Cannabis Regulatory Commission because in New Jersey, we're going to be in that, that special situation where cannabis business owners are going to be looking for information that they can't get from other places. So again, this isn't to overwhelm, but as you are doing research and seeing what needs are in the community or what people might need to know about, some of these might just ring a bell and it might be something worth pursuing or even just having a link on your website if you think that would be appropriate. Um, any questions or comments? Becky, I feel bad because your your camera's on, so I feel like I want to constantly ask you what you're thinking. <laughs> oh, my camera's on, huh? <laughs> I didn't realize anyone could see me. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I um, I mean, I think I, I keep coming up with like ideas of how we could bring business owners in, and also how we can support them. And I like the idea of putting the link on the website, like maybe adding like for a new business owner section. Um, I just, I want to make sure it's something that's really sustainable if we're going to offer it too. Mm -hmm. So, um, Amy, you said you've worked with SCORE and had them there. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not opposed to offering, we're, we're looking forward to having a new programming room added to our library within the next year. And, um, I'm hoping that like when that's added, oops, sorry. When that is added, we will be able to like do so much more for our community. Yeah, and I would definitely point you to that um, Libraries Build Business Playbook. 
because they have like three different levels of things that libraries can offer. And I think they break it down so that it's less overwhelming with, you know, you can start with what you're already doing and maybe, mm -hmm. you know, change the language a little bit or put it in one section. Um, and yeah, I think that uh, starting with score is a really good way to go. And um, also when you have the space, then, you know, people start getting used to having that and, and the things yeah. that are offered there. So it can kind of have that momentum. Yeah, all right. Now, I did put in the CDFIs in New Jersey because when we're talking about that capital, it's um, what I find is uh, these organizations can provide training and or might have events that you would like to be aware of, meet the lenders, things like that. Um, and I got this definition from um, the CDI fund website, but Joe, Alejandro, can you like explain this in like simple speak um, what these organizations are and how they might work in uh, complementary to other lenders or how they might be different? Yeah, so Community Development Financial Institution, we at UCEDC were one example of what a, a CDFI is. For most CD, there's only a few in New Jersey, by the way, and um, UC EDC is actually the only one that provides um, all the training and counseling and, um, you know, special entrepreneurship programs and assistance with government contracting, kind of a, a real, a full uh, service organization to small businesses. Um, what most CDFIs do, you know, at their core is they're lending to um, businesses and organizations who are um, not bankable, uh, you know, in real simple terms. I mean, you can read through the bullet points and all that is all that is correct. But, you know, in layman's terms for a small business who's, you know, where do I go for financing? Um, if you're a startup, going to a CDFI is a, a good bet because a bank is going to tell you to just go there. Now, in some cases, banks who, um, banks who, um, have SBA funds to lend um, can fit into this category. So it's like some select community banks may be able to do that, but they may still um, not work with a, a startup business. They may require a business to have been in business at least two years, that kind of thing. So for mm -hmm. pure startup, CDFIs are, are definitely the way to go. And, you know, our, as a CDFI, our mission is to focus on um, underrepresented populations and, um, you know, uh, uh, towns and, and uh, cities that are going through revitalization. So we're trying to rebuild their their downtown. So that's that's our focus, you know, where people kind of need the most help uh, in, uh, in their populations and in and their uh, business communities. Thank you. Yeah. And then I did list um, the ones I put UCDC at the top. Um, <laughs> There's also um, the other ones, it, you know, the descriptions kind of say if they have a certain geographic focus or, you know, um, other ones to, to check out. Um, but if you do have one in your local area and that is, a, you know, a need in your community, it might be worth reaching out and seeing um, what their needs are or bring them into the library to talk about what they do. Yeah. So uh, CBAC, RBAC, VOC Capital, New Jersey Community Capital, Pursuit Lending, um, and Greater Newark Enterprises Corporation. So there's all those links and I'll share that. Um, and then some additional organizations, um, Rising Tide Capital, they've been expanding. Um, they think they started out in Newark and they've been doing more and more. Um, so they offer entrepreneurship training. Um, they have classes and cohorts um, moving through their entrepreneurship programs, and they offer capital. Laida, which uh, we mentioned before, um, it also has a women's uh, entrepreneurship center in it. Um, they are uh, very active, particularly in South Jersey. Um, and then NJIT Procurement Technical Assistance Center, um, since businesses can really benefit from doing business with the government, um, they do assist with that procurement um, uh, technical assistance. Um, 
So those are additional ones that you might wanna be aware of. The last category, um, chambers of commerce. And I put some uh, of the national and state ones and regional here, but what you'll find is there are a lot of local chambers. I There's no way that I could list them all on a couple slides. And there might also be other kinds of business networking groups. And I'd say that if you're gonna walk away with this and you're feeling overwhelmed and where do I start? It would be wonderful to reach out to SCORE if you're not connected to them, UCEDC, UCEDC obviously, and um, your local chamber of commerce, whatever that might be. It might be um, a main street alliance. It might be a county or a community-based chamber of commerce, but that's where the um, local business owners are coming together for that local networking, meeting with local politicians, um, learning from each other. Uh, you know, if there's something that they need, that's where they're kind, that's their, um, how they're pulling together to ask for it. And you can learn a lot about the needs of business owners in your community by being connected to the chambers. And I'd say chambers are mostly falling in that community part of the Venn diagram, but they will be connected to some of the other aspects, or they might appreciate your connection to those other aspects of our Venn diagram. Um, and since they're member-based usually, they want to be of benefit to their members. So if the library is bringing some kind of benefit, um, they might want to partner with the library to bring that information to their members. Um, so there are chambers by geographic region. There's also chambers by population group. And you may find that in your community, there's a chamber by population group and geographic region. So that's something that you can explore and ask around um, and see. All right. Thank you so much for being here, Joe. I saw your message that you're logging off. Okay. Um, and then I also have, I think this is the last slide, some links to other business and industry associations. So if there is a business um, or an industry type that is predominant in your community, um, there is likely a business group that's around that. Um, I have not connected with these groups. Um, so I don't know that I would say that this is like a place for a, a library um, to start out. But if there is something that is a major industry in your location, it's probably a good idea to be connected or at least be aware of that industry's association, especially if there's something at the local level. Um, but these often provide advocacy. They often are networking opportunities and sharing information, again, with their members, so member-based. Um, and then they might also on their website have special information about that industry. And actually, I think I do have one more. So like hospitality, for instance, and uh, restaurants. So they'll have information on their website that might be useful. And I think that's it. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And um, so I'll be sharing those slides, but um, we have only a few minutes left. So um, I'll turn it back over to you guys. Um, are there any questions um, about what we shared or discussed? Andrea, I will say that if you have any questions about training or things like that or where to go, just let us know. We can help you out because we have relations with all of these organizations and we can point you to the correct person to ask those questions. Um, and you know, you can go to ucdc.com under training. We have uh, the training catalog and everything that you cover in the first part of the of this train webinar, basically we cover those with training and we can do those with you guys. So that there's no cost associated with that. Uh, we don't add for money for anything because part of the CDFI is helping the community, the uh, underserved parts of our community be able to improve their quality of life through entrepreneurship and capital access. I, uh, Alejandro, would you do those trainings virtually with us or would you actually come to the library and provide a training? We'll do most of them. We will do them virtually because in our experience, 90% of the people <laughs> will not show up. <laughs> we do those. No, I understand person. that. I understand that. Yeah, so... Um, 
But yes, right. we can do, and, and you can let us know, hey, yeah, I want to do this X, Y, Z in this area. And we can help you with, with the marketing too. What so. is like the high time that you find that you get the most people coming in for any type of training or new businesses being created? Like what is the, the time when most people are needing help? I will say uh, like the, the end of the first quarter of each year, like let's say like middle of February to, to May, Mm -hmm. they, they want to have a lot of information on how to start a business in New Jersey, for example, okay. and access to capital. They, they really need uh, Over the summer, a lot of people don't want to do a lot of things because if they have families, they want to be with their families and that goes down. Mm -hmm. um, and even in, in summer, a lot of people want to start looking into uh, the market, in, in, interested in, in developing the market, uh, analyzing uh, the financial viability of their business at the end of the day. We see that a lot in, during summer. And the rest of the year is like more legal stuff. Um, they want to know uh, what documentation or they want to know um, uh, how to register a business in New Jersey, which, uh, what should they do? And, do? and we do have webinars uh, about all those topics. If someone mm -hmm. needs that, they just register online in our website and they can access those uh, recordings okay. because I think it's really good. That's really useful information. Yeah. And I'm even thinking with the summer with marketing and things, um, businesses that are in retail really have to start thinking about the holidays so early. And that yes. usually isn't in our brains. Like summer is when libraries are thinking about summer reading and vacations and things. But I think I'll post well, see, I. I think yeah. about that differently, actually. I think, so for instance, today, I already have to have all of my programs in for January through March. Oh, wow. So, you know, I already have everything mapped out for those months for the most part. And if I know ahead of time, like this is a high time for businesses to want to know about marketing. If it's, if it's summer, then I can schedule something in the summer. Like I, I want it to go hand in hand. Like you know, once some, if we're in summer, my summer reading is already planned out. Like all that's done. I just have to like run those programs, but they're, that's already planned out. That's at that point. I'm just. Yeah. And, and, and you can also uh, survey your community, uh, whether that you can say, Hey, we, we can do these programs. Uh, what's the demand? Because it's not like the same everywhere, but mm -hmm. sometimes uh, the, the community say like, Hey, we, we want to learn more about how to win a, open a business in New Jersey. And we do mm -hmm. that. So it's all the, also them, the, um, a way to, to see is just uh, asking asking them uh, what they want to learn. Um, yeah. And you'll see we that. Actually have, we actually are doing a program specifically like tell us tell us what you want. And it's like coming in for like mocktails and sweets and like mm -hmm. telling us everything you want. Like do you, do, how do you feel about our programs? How do you feel about the books on the shelves? Is the seating comfortable? Like tell us what you want. And yeah, we're just trying to. And yeah, we do them. that a lot of times we, we say like, hey, just ask the people that you're mm -hmm. uh, you're in contact with. Tell us, tell you what they actually need on a daily basis or, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then we will see, for example, uh, in, in the Mercer County area in Trenton, a lot of people want to go into the food business. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we have a, a program for that. Um, yeah, we have other programs that are more into to uh, service areas, like in in North Jersey, more service area. In South Jersey, some people want to do uh, production. So th those mm -hmm. differ. But the, the whole idea is that we can do everything. Uh, and you can just take a look at it and, and talk to your people. And, and you can tell us, hey, this is where we're going to go. And we'll yeah. make it happen. Okay. Of course, we need around the one month ahead of time, I will say a month and a half, just to do the marketing, you know? Oh, we do, oh. like I said, I, I, I have it done. <laughs> yeah. If I'm scheduling something, it's done months and months ahead of time. Oh, absolutely, and I like that. I'll try to do the same, but it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it is. All right, well, we're at time. Um, so I'm going, well, first I'm gonna stop the recording. <laughs>